Hey guys and welcome back to another vlog. I just spent all morning filming my morning routine because heaps of you guys actually commented on my last vlog saying you'd like to see one and I'll also film my nighttime routine as well at night time. So yeah, I filmed that this morning. I did a body pump workout. I had a coffee before and I'm just on my YouTube video actually replying to some of your comments. I try and get back to as many of you as I can, especially if you're asking questions and stuff like that. I also am planning on either today or tomorrow filming my reacting to my first YouTube video video. So I'll literally set the camera up and watch my first video and film my reaction. It is so cringe. For those that don't know, it is my, I did a makeup tutorial. I'm pretty sure I even used like, my phone as the camera or even like webcam. I don't know, it's just really shit quality. And I tested out half my face using the Astralis contouring powder because back then, like in 2015 or 16, it was like the ultimate dupe for the Anastasia Beverly Hills contouring kit. So I did half my face using ABH and half with Astralis and it was just shocking. Like the video, I remember I, watched it back maybe a year ago and I was cringing so hard but that was my first proper video that kind of went viral like back then a hundred thousand views which is what it got was like equivalent to a million views today so I was so excited and then my account sort of just gained subscribers from that video um, and then like all my other videos after that like obviously didn't really do too well like I think I got I went back and I saw the views on my videos after that thinking I'd get like the same amount of views, but I did it. I only got like under 5,000 views every video, but I enjoyed making them. So I just kept going and yeah, 600,000 subscribers later, here I am from that video pretty much. So yeah, I'm gonna film a reaction to that video. And then I asked you guys on Instagram to send me some questions in relation to being an influencer, how I got here and all of that. So. Um, during the video or even after I'll just sit down and answer some of the popular questions that you guys have um, So yeah, that's literally been my morning. I've just been doing some work emails and stuff like that I'm not gonna eat until lunchtime I'm not really that hungry because I've kind of trained myself Not to eat until around like one or two. So I'm gonna do some emails and I do also need to clean the house at one point but I did a pretty good job last Monday at cleaning so I don't really have to do as much I might just do a vacuum and not mop and then just do the bathrooms and the toilet but everything else is still pretty good so and I also need to do the dishes so yeah I will catch up with you guys later okay so I thought I would share how I prepare my jelly so I usually have jelly most nights or just whenever I'm craving something and I use the jelly light that you can get from literally anywhere any supermarket so I take one sachet. I prefer to split them up into four servings, even though I think there's eight servings per pack, but it's still so low calorie. So I put in one whole sachet. I just use like this shaper to mix it up. Then I put about half a tablespoon of gelatin, just because I don't like my jelly like soft, like it's weird. Anyways. So half a tablespoon of gelatin, this is the one I use, it's just from Low Carb Emporium, but any will do, like you can get gelatin from the shops. And then I fill up 200 ml, probably shouldn't have used this cup, but it's actually quite hard to see. 200 ml of boiling water, and then make sure you stir it really good because the gelatin kind of clumps up sometimes. And then after that, you just fill up the rest with normal filtered water or just normal water up to 500 mils so all together there should be 500 mils of liquid 200 boiling and then 300 um normal cold water usually i use a clear one so i can see but i guess i can see so i'll fill it up up to 500 if you use any more water it just dilutes it and tastes not as nice so Okay, now you're going to want to mix. You can also make um, like a jelly with electrolytes. So you just mix in electrolytes with the gelatin if you prefer that. But I haven't actually tried that before. I just love the jelly. I might actually give it a go actually one day. So now I just evenly 
put them in these little jelly cups, which I got in a three pack from Coles. The other one I think is in the wash. So even, oh, evenly between four servings. They're about 20 calories per serve, which is nothing. Um, even if you wanted to have two or three, that's like literally 100 calories right there. Like if you had the whole thing. Um, but personally, one is enough for me and I usually have it with my ice cream. So yeah, that's how I prepare my jelly. made nachos again because I'm obsessed but I'm just using the loca chips this time because I think I prefer them over the quest they're like a funny aftertaste when you have too many so like this is half <laughs> this is half a packet of the loca cheese and herb chips so freaking good a disease or disorder or condition called lipedema or lipedema good morning guys so I obviously just woke up in my PJs and my sports bra, I'm just having a coffee, just waiting for Peter to get up because he just gets up maybe like half an hour after me. Um, we're gonna do a workout today, but I was just watching Riley's video. Obviously, I've known for a while. That was really touching. Like, I'm so, I'm like gonna cry. Um, pulled it together. She is like literally one of the most real, raw, honest people I've ever met, ever. Like, she is just, amazing so yeah she was diagnosed with that disease um so she did mention it in her video well she did mention it to me obviously we've been talking a lot because she um was recommended to try keto to reduce the um like the pain inflammation in her leg so i really really want her to love keto because obviously i'm like a keto advocate I love keto um, so I decided to go on to low carb emporium and send her a little goodie box of some of my favorite stuff because I know she doesn't really have any keto stuff so I'm gonna add in a Vitaworks white chocolate I know she likes coconut rough but yeah I just thought that would make her day brighten up her day Oh, she loves those. Where's the macadamia ones? All right, I'm going to go. I'll show you guys what I end up picking out for her. But yeah, I'm just going to go through and pick out some stuff and make an order and send it straight to her house. Okay, this is what I've got in the cart so far. The keto cookies. I like those. She can try the crispy collie garlic and her bites. I tried them. They're all right, but she likes stuff like that. Um, garlic bread flavor keto crackers, which I haven't tried, but I really want to try it. I'm sure she'll like that. Coconut chips, the low-car Italian cheese and herb chips for nachos or like vegetarian nachos. The pasta sauce, uh, sweet chili sauce, electrolytes, the blue raspberry. I got her like a vanilla almond biscuit mix from 180 Cakes. Some Slendia noodles. Actually, I was going to only just do one of those, so I'll remove that one. I think she'd rather the other one. Some tomato sauce and some Vitaworks white chocolate. Let's see if my code works. Jazz 5%. Just chucked in my code. I'm going to ask Low Carbon Porium if they can put in a little like handwritten note and say it's from me, but I hope this brightens up her day. Got a package from Eamon yesterday afternoon. This is their new seamless crop. I'll show you guys the back. Maybe I'll just go like this. I actually love that for the extra support. So yeah, I'm gonna go and do a cardio workout. I think I might do either body combat, which is sort of like a martial arts inspired body weight cardio workout. If you guys don't do the um, Les Mills classes or like the Good Life classes, you'd have no idea what I'm talking about, but it looks so funny. <laughs> like you're literally like punching in the air and you're kicking, but it's a really good workout and I'm always so sore after it. So I might 
so you guys are going to try put into a little time lapse so you guys can see but i haven't done body combat in ages and also i'm not sponsored by les mills like i don't work with them or anything like that i would love to but yeah they don't pay me to say that i do like their program online i literally pay a subscription now because i have already um, finished my free two-week trial because I do have like that barbell equipment to do body pump um, but obviously you can do other um, Types of workouts like body weight stuff. I personally don't really do them as often as I do body pump I probably do body pump like two or three times a week and then the other um, Classes like body attack and body combat. I haven't tried the Les Mills bar yet So I might do that maybe tomorrow. So my workout schedules Three days a week I'll do body pump, one day I'll do Pilates, and then one day I'll do like a cardio or HIIT workout. And usually I train like five times a week. If I do train six times a week, I just walk on the treadmill usually at the gym, but because we don't have access to the gym and I don't have a treadmill, I'm pretty much just doing like five times a week. So yeah, that's like my workout sketch at the moment. Sometimes I like to make up my own workouts and get some ideas from the JRF app, which is the meal plan that I did a couple months ago, or maybe even longer, maybe a year ago. Um, I've done two rounds of that meal plan, but I've never actually really gotten into their workouts because it's all mainly gym based. But since coronavirus, they have uploaded some at home, it's called like the COVID at home workouts where he's uploaded so many body weight workouts. So you don't even need any sort of weights or anything at home. Um, so I have been like doing them sometimes and I'll write it on my whiteboard and do it outside. Um, and then I sometimes do incorporate weights if I feel like it, but sometimes I just feel like doing my own thing without watching a video and following along. So I did one of those last week. I don't think I vlogged it. Did I? No, I didn't vlog it. But yeah, it just depends on like what I'm really feeling on the day. So yeah, I think tomorrow I will do Pilates. I definitely do Pilates once a week. Sometimes I do it twice a week. When I was going into the studio, when it was open here in Perth, I was going two to three times a week, but that was on the reformer and I much prefer that style of Pilates. Um, but yeah, I do try and incorporate at least one Pilates workout a week. And I find that since incorporating Pilates, it's definitely helped tone and shape my stomach. Like if you saw my TikTok, Look at my waist comparison compared to the first pic. That was before or when I just first started getting into Pilates. And obviously the after was me incorporating Pilates for that whole time. Even if it is just once a week, it definitely helps. And I can safely say that I've never really looked so strong and firm in my stomach before. Like I always have struggled to tone my stomach because I've never really done any ab or core work as much as I've done now with Pilates. So yeah, really recommend Pilates. And I love it because it's a very low impact workout. Like you're not burning as many calories as you normally would either doing like a cardio workout or a body pump because I literally burn like 600 calories on a body pump workout, like a 55 minute. I literally pump out the calories. But whereas with Pilates, it's more low impact. Like I might burn under 200, for example, in about 40 minutes, but it burns. Like I definitely feel it the next day. So yeah, it goes to show you don't really need to be burning like a stupid amount of calories for your body to change and tone up. It depends on the type of exercise you're doing. So little tip there. I will also update you guys on my nails. These are the press on ones that I got from... I'll tell you guys later after I finish my workout, but on this side, I literally just flipped this one off and it was so sore, but I've had these on for four days and they're quite good um, for press on nails. So I think the glue is pretty much like a super glue. Oh, it's here. Trez She. That's the brand. It comes with a little um, file, heaps of different size nails and um, a glue, which I'm pretty sure, like I said, is super glue. Like it does not budge.
Look at me. Wow. I only did 40 minutes of that. I think there was like one more round, but it was getting so hot outside. So I just ended it at 40 minutes and I burnt just over 400 calories. So that's not too bad. 40 minutes and counting. What? Also, this company called Move, M-U-V-E, gave me a discount code. They messaged me on Instagram a few days ago and gave me a discount code for these bottles. It's so cute because they're personalized. Peter loves his. He uses them all the time as well. Like he's using it now while he's working out. But yeah, they gave me a code if you guys wanted to get one for yourself. It's just Jazz 10. It is an affiliate link as well. Um, but yeah. He reached out to me and I was like, sure, why not? After I finish having a shower and cool down, um, I'm gonna jump on and answer some questions that you guys made in my last video because you guys seem to love my like influencer chats. There was actually quite a few questions in the pinned comment that I did last vlog, so I might go through some of the most asked questions and answer some. And I also wanna film my reacting to my first YouTube video this week, maybe today if I have enough time, but whew, that was, at the start I was like, am I ever gonna sweat? And then it just, bam, my heart rate just went through the roof and I am dripping, so I've gotta go wash my hair. I'm gonna go have a shower now and then relax, because I'm absolutely dead. Hey guys, little update. Um, I just, yeah, washed my hair. So I actually got sucked into, I think it was a Facebook ad or, I don't know, I just saw it on Facebook somewhere and I was like, wow, I actually need that. Like, how did Facebook know? Let's just set you guys up there. How did Facebook know that I needed this? And I was like, maybe I was searching lighting. Anyway, so I got this. That's besides the point. I got this from eBay. It's really coming apart. It was like 20 bucks. I need to make myself look a little bit more presentable. I look like a hobo half the time. So I got this from eBay. How freaking cool is it? I basically just got it. Let me go get the thingy. It plugs into a USB. Look at that. And it also came with different colored fabric for the background. So there was green, blue, yellow, red. Obviously I want something nice and white. So I'm gonna test it out. I have tried it on my phone, but I thought I would try it with some accessories that I got. So this is the little Kmart thingy-mabob. I'm gonna see if I can take a picture of like the charms or something like that. I don't know if I'll even be taking photos like this, but I also get my, um, the silk sheets as well and see. So there's a hole at the top which you can take a photo from above or you can just take it straight from here. So this is my Canon 60D, 70D. And this is what I used for my makeup videos. But now I just use my Canon G7X. Highly recommend the camera that I'm on right now for vlogging, even makeup tutorials. Like it's so crisp and clear and I love the little flip up so you can actually see yourself when you're vlogging. Highly recommend, but I guess this one, quality wise is more like HD, whereas this one has like, not a smoothing filter, but I feel like it does have some sort of softening filter. I don't know, like compared to this one, like you can see every single pore, whereas I feel like you can't really with this one. I don't know. I just prefer that one over this one, but for product shots and like really zoomed up photos, that one, the Canon G7X, not so good. It's not very good at focusing on products that or things that are really close up, especially when you're using it for the camera. Maybe I'm using the wrong settings or something. So if anyone has any tips on taking product shots or like taking photos of really small things zoomed up on the Canon G7X, let me know in the comments below. But for now, I'm going to use my Canon 70D, so I've charged it. I'll put the photos on the screen so you guys can see. Okay, I'm just gonna do a really up close. Oh my God, that's really cool. Like imagine that edited, like that already looks so good. 
I'm actually so glad I got these from Spotlight. I got these like months ago from Spotlight. Just because whenever I have an idea, I feel like I need to go and act upon it and do it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pierce some holes in this, right? Get the huggies, chuck the charms on. Maybe I'll do the flower. That looks so cute. Okay, this is what they look like on the thingy. But yeah, I just poked two little holes in. Obviously gonna have to set them up so they look really nice and even. Come on. Okay, I'm gonna have to play around with that, but I'll show you guys the photos. Where the fuck is the flash? Okay, here we go. <gasps> Guys, this is working. Oh yeah, that's quite good as well. So I just had a little photo shoot sesh. Great success. I'm gonna put some of my favorite pics here so you guys can see, but wow, that light does make a world of a difference. Obviously you need to still tweak and edit your photos to make them a bit more brighter. Not many brands post raw images on their website or their Instagram. Even though they may not look edited, there's always some sort of retouching. So I played around on Lightroom um, just to see and I'm really happy with some of them. Um, I actually really enjoy doing that. Like, what the hell? So I'm also a photographer now. Chucks. <laughs> but seriously, like, highly recommend that. I'll leave it linked down below. As I said, it was just from eBay, and it was like $20. And it actually came really fast, because I only ordered it maybe like five days ago. So glad I ended up getting those silk sheets. They were really cheap. They were just from Spotlight. As I said, I got them quite a few months ago when I first had the idea of this, because I was just taking photos of random shit just to see um but yeah this light really did make a difference okay so i'm making some chicken schnitzel for lunch so the way i've ketified mine so peter just has normal crumb i actually use panko bread crumbs but i for the flour i used almond flour so i dip i cracked two eggs in there whisked it up mixed it then i'll dip in the breast to the egg i think i need one more but that's all right i feel like that'll be enough oh maybe it won't actually because i gotta dip it back in anyway so you dip the um chicken in there into some almond flour and then dip it in the egg again but i obviously ha don't have much egg and then you dip it into your parmesan cheese so this is my schnitzel all right i don't really mind not having that extra bit of egg or whatever, but yeah, so freaking good. And then just shallow fry them like this. Oh, that's burning. Okay, so I didn't realize, fuck, that it was on like a really high heat. I guess that's like golden brown. I guess it's not black. But yeah, they're Peter's chicken schnitzels, and then I just cooked those too because I didn't. I wasn't actually planning on making chicken schnitzels, but I did want to show you guys how I ketified mine if I was to make chicken schnitzels. But they're, they're just the normal one. Okay, this is what mine turned out like. That's just grilled chicken, and that's the Parmesan crust. And then these are the panko ones. Okay, I didn't really burn it. Looks good. Good morning, you guys. I just got up not long ago. Chucked on a job puff. For those that ask, these are from Big W. You get them in a two pack and I think they were like $10. They're really, really nice. I thought while I'm having my morning coffee, I'm not gonna do any intense workouts today because I am so sore from body combat. I might even go for a walk around the block or even just do Pilates or something, like something really low impact. I'm just gonna make my coffee and then I'll set up maybe in my filming room and answer some questions um, that you guys asked in my last vlog in the comments just about the whole 
how influencers get paid and stuff like that because i want to do a little segment maybe like each vlog and answer some questions that you guys have i also finally took the photo for my giveaway so keep an eye out on my instagram um this week and i'll have it posted but that's all the products that someone can win okay let's bring up some of the questions you guys left me last vlog I don't know much about editing and software to use. I want to start making YouTube videos for my friends and family about makeup, but I just don't know what is good to use in terms of equipment, camera, and stuff. Good quality and a fair price. I'd be interested to know what your faves are. Thank you, your amazing love from Canada. So, when I first started YouTube, I literally used iMovie for about four years. Up until this year, I decided to step up to Final Cut Pro, which isn't a free program. It actually costs $500. Um, so I was weighing up, like, do I really need to upgrade on better software when I'm pretty basic at editing anyways? Like my vlogs, I don't have any like crazy graphics. And if I do, they're already like pre-made. So I just add them into the vlog. Like my intro video, I literally just like click and drag that. So I could have done that in iMovie as well. Um, I don't know what made me want to get Final Cut Pro, but anyways, that's just as a point. I used iMovie, so if you have an Apple, it comes free with any sort of Apple MacBook or laptop. I found that that was literally the easiest program to use in terms of editing, like, basic videos. If you did want more complex, like, graphics or, like, not filters, but they have, like, um, what's it called? Just, like, other add-ons. For example, if you wanted like the cam recorder effect, they don't have that on iMovie. They don't really have, they've only got like black, white, um, sepia, like just the very basic filters that you can put on, even though I didn't even use them and I didn't get Final Cut Pro because of the filters. Um, so yeah, I literally used iMovie for about four years and it was so easy to use. You can actually buy a free trial with Final Cut Pro, I think for two weeks, if you guys would rather try that first. It's quite different in terms of like how to edit and I found it really hard to adjust from iMovie because iMovie is just so freaking easy and I'm sure there's so many YouTube videos on how to use it. but. Yeah, the transition from iMovie to Final Cut Pro for me was really hard. Even after the two or three week trial, I still wasn't like 100% confident. And then when I bought it, I was like, why did I buy something when I probably won't even use it? But now I use it and I find it super, super easy to use. Um, it's just, I don't know, like obviously with things, with practice, it gets easier over time. Editing on Final Cut Pro is amazing now. I just didn't like that iMovie was restrictive in the text. So they've got like various text options, whether to add them on the screen, but you couldn't actually freely move the text to wherever you wanted on the screen. They only had like a position here, 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 and that's it. Like if you wanted to put text there, you couldn't actually move it, which really frustrated me sometimes when I was editing. I was like, I don't want the text there. Like I want it above like, I don't know where I'm speaking or something. For those that are just starting, I just highly recommend iMovie. So right now I'm on a Canon G7X. I fucking love it. And I can assure you 99.9% .9 of vloggers or influencers or YouTubers use this exact camera. I know that some people use the Sony. I think they are around the same price point. Um, but I obviously have never tried the Sony, so I don't know. I just always had Canon, even my massive camera that I use for my beauty videos, Canon 70D, um, which I highly recommend as well. It's a really good camera, but I find that for everything, now I'm using the Canon G7X. Even for my makeup videos, I'll use it for vlogging. It's also really great for photos as well, whereas the Canon 70D is more like a professional photographer's photo, so... The photos come out like almost too HD, but for like all in all, for vlogs, for photos, um, and for makeup tutorials, I've been using my Canon G7X and I freaking love it. I think it was around nine hundred, eight to nine hundred dollars, but worth the investment. I've been using this one, well, not this one, because I did have the Mark One, and then I upgraded when that one shut itself. Well, not shut itself, but it was just so old, and you know how like. Over time, camera quality gets better. I did upgrade to the Canon Mark II. The quality, as you can see, is amazing. It like auto focuses. So when you're doing like a makeup video, 
you can hold stuff up and it'll focus and then it'll go back to focusing on your face which was a really big issue when I first started vlogging because I got the Canon 600D and it was an autofocus so I literally had to go like this click the screen show the product put the product down click my face and then focus it again it was so annoying I know I should have looked into that but like I this on the web. shut up I know I should have looked into that but like when I was like starting out I didn't think it would turn into what it is now so I was like oh it'll do it's just a good like it's better camera than my bloody webcam or my phone so I just yeah I just did that for about a year and I was like no I can't do this anymore I need an upgrade I need an autofocus camera so the Canon 70D is amazing um if you want even better than that I'm pretty sure they have Canon 7D but that's just up to your entire budget so next question when you or any other influencers you know were starting out, did you ever do small collabs or receive product from a company to promote it, even though you didn't love it, to try and grow as an influencer? It seems like all the really popular brands only reach out to influencers who have 100k plus followers. I use your codes to support you whenever you can, or, and I love your vibe and what you stand for. Um, I would be lying if I said no. I can't 100% remember when I had like under 10k followers if I'd gotten something and I was like, oh, this is so bad and still promoted it anyways and posted it because I got it for free. I feel like back then, I don't know, I'm, I might have been like 17 or 18 and I probably would have. Now I am super selective on what I actually post on Instagram, even on YouTube, what I mention, um, in saying that I do not just talk about a product because I'm getting paid for it. Most of the things that I talk about are things that I genuinely use and love. It's just a bonus that some of my favorite brands I do get to work with on either an affiliate base or like a paid base. So yeah, I feel like back then, you know, like, yeah, I guess. But in saying that though, like I wouldn't ever accept a product that wasn't like beauty or fashion related back then. Like if, for example, I don't know, what's something so random? Window cleaner, don't know, I'm looking at a window. Like if they reached out to me back then, I would probably say no, because why the fuck would I post that? Like I get what you mean, it was really exciting when brands would reach out and be like, hey, would I'd love to send you this in, in exchange for some stories, a post or whatever. And most of the time, yeah, I would take it because I'd never, experience that before i'd never gotten free stuff sent to me in return like back then i just thought well yeah fuck yeah i'll you know promote your makeup product skincare product for an exchange like that's me not having to buy it anyway so i thought that was a really good exchange which it is like you're getting a free product but then you're also giving them free advertising that's when um you know rates and stuff like that um get put into play but you will soon find out after doing that for a few years or a few months or however long it takes for your brand to build and by brand I mean like your personal brand like your Instagram you know as time goes on you learn new things you you know value like what you're worth um so you'll figure it out you'll figure out how much you would like to be paid I know it's a really awkward topic especially if a brand does approach you and they ask you to promote their product for free in exchange what I used to do back then, or even sometimes now, like a brand would approach me and still ask me to post in exchange. If I genuinely like the brand, I'll be interested. If a brand messages me, like the, probably the most polite way of asking if this is a paid opportunity is just to simply say, hey, thank you so much for reaching out. I'd love to work with you. Do you have a budget for this? Which basically means like, do you have money in your marketing budget to give me to promote your products? You know, some of the time they may say, no, sorry, um, and that's it, and that's final. They won't send your product unless you post about it for free. Um, you'd be surprised with some of the replies that I had gotten when I was more of a micro-influencer. So I don't think I started asking because I was just really, I guess back then I was a bit self-conscious and, you know, money and stuff wasn't my priority being on Instagram back then. I purely did it for fun, I had another job. I didn't actually even think that you could really make much money from Instagram and YouTube and all that. So I literally had no idea. As a brand perspective, I guess I could speak as a brand because I am my own brand. 
I guess. Um, and I obviously have another business. So what I would look for in an influencer or content creator is their content. To be honest, followers don't mean shit. If you had 5,000 followers or under and you your feed was aesthetically pleasing, you took really nice photos, I would rather send my product and pay that person over someone with 100K plus with not the best feed um, or like aesthetic or like their feed just isn't like visually pleasing, like if that makes sense. So I, I tend to look for what looks pretty, like nice filters, like that's what brands look for, especially in content. So I think I, I'm going to elaborate on that as well. So I thought I would share some brands that I have personally seen collaborate with smaller influencers. Um, I found that Princess Polly do work with a lot of micro influencers, meaning like under 10K followers. Um, normally they won't pay for this, so they'll send you the product for free and they'll ask you to do like an Insta story haul or even that in a post or just a post. But Princess Polly is very generous and I don't know, I just see them working with a lot of micro influencers, which is so, like it is a smart move. I don't know why more brands do it. Um, it's pretty much free advertising for them. So even if you had under 10K followers, that's 10K or under 10k people or a few thousand people will see your stories at least maybe under five or more than five will take advantage of your discount code by them giving you free product which is probably really cheap for them to get they're making sales from that story or instagram post and making money off that like making more money than they're spending giving the influencer free clothes so yeah i don't know why most um, companies do it, especially fashion. Um, my advice would be if you want to work with Princess Polly or I was going to say Boohoo also work with smaller influencers, simply just DM them or email them and just like express your interest. Introduce yourself. Hey, I'm Jazz. I am from Perth, Australia. That was weird. I am a beauty blogger, vlogger, so say what you are, what your like niche is on your Instagram. I'm a fashion enthusiast or something like that. And I absolutely love your brand. And then you can say, I'm super interested in working with you guys. If you're keen, um, please let me know pretty much. That's all you have to really say. Um, and yeah, just see what they say back. Yeah, most of the time, like I said, they will offer you free clothes in exchange. I'm going to try and think of some makeup brands that used to send me product when I only had under 10K followers. I might have to... Think about that and maybe mention that in my next video. I'll try and see if I can find any um, brands that reached out to me personally back then when I had like under maybe 20K, but from the top of my head, I can't really remember. But it's really, really important. I know this is like off topic again, to use hashtags. So if you're using like certain brands, like makeup products, skincare, fashion, make sure you hashtag their brand name because that's how they sometimes repost and find photos to repost. So I remember when I literally had like under 20k, I'm pretty sure, Anastasia Beverly Hills's PR team reached out to me to send me stuff. I was like, what the fuck? I've made it. I was, I literally cried to mum because I had bought almost all of her stuff before she'd sent me um, PR. My brow powders, I had her brush because there was this shop I remember in Broad Beach, Oasis, and they did eyebrow threading or waxing and they only use Anastasia Beverly Hills. Me and my mum always used to go there. Literally once a month we'd go there and then when we needed a top up of like brow powder or anything we would always buy from there. So literally since I was little I use Anastasia brow stuff. Okay, just picture that, like just obsessed with that brand, love it, mum was obsessed. And then they reach out to me when I, I feel like when I just first started Instagram, like under 20K and I was bawling my eyes out. They were like, we love your makeup looks back then. I don't think they were that good, but I guess like, you know, makeup evolves over time and back then, even like when I look back at my clients and stuff, I was like, ooh. Did I really do that? But then back then they actually really liked it. It's just crazy how trends and stuff change in beauty. Anyways, back then I was over the fucking moon. So Anastasia Beverly Hills was one of my first companies that reached out to me to send me PR. Then Gerard Cosmetics. 
Um, and then I got some from Benefit, Benefit Australia. They reached out to me and I was so excited because I loved Hula and I still love it to this day. Um, and then I think Huda Beauty reached out to me maybe like two or three years ago. So not at the start, but they are also a really generous brand. Like, wow, their PR is amazing. I'm trying to think. Mm, Too Faced as well. That were, wasn't really early. Um, maybe when I started growing a bit, but yeah, so I will touch on certain makeup brands that I feel that would, I'm actually going to do some research and like have a look on Instagram and see what brands send micro influencers some stuff like makeup and skincare wise. So I don't really, yeah, I don't really know any from the top of my head, but I'll let you guys know as well in my next segment of this. So I'm just going to go ahead and answer one more question because I feel like this is going to go on forever. I love your movie length vlogs. Um, tips on how to be confident in front of the camera if you're shy and you don't feel like talking to a camera. Okay, so obviously, like I said in my last vlog, talking to yourself or talking to a camera is not normal. Like, it's not something that someone's probably done before. Like, you know. So... I would suggest starting off by not speaking and just recording maybe a makeup tutorial or something like that. Because my first video, I think was me, was it a voiceover? I may have done a voiceover makeup tutorial and I can't believe I bloody deleted it off my YouTube. I didn't just hide it. I deleted the video. I'm so angry at myself for doing that because I can never look back at it. It's literally gone unless someone knows of how I can get that back but it's literally gone from my account. Like my very first YouTube video was me filming myself with my webcam on my computer. And I think I did a voiceover and it was so bad. Like it was so cringe. Anyways, um, how to be confident in front of a camera. It's definitely not easy, especially when you're first starting out. But just like I said before, with practice makes perfect. Like the more you do it, the more you get more confident. It's just with anything, eyeliner. The more you practice your eyeliner, the more confident you get, the faster you get at it. Um, what's something else? Making a certain meal. Like, you know, once you make it a few times, you're like, okay, I don't even need to think about how much to measure or whatever. You just kind of, it just comes naturally. So I would say when I was my biggest, um, when I was 90 kilos and I did start, I didn't really vlog much back then. I was quite self-conscious as a teen being overweight. Um, so I wasn't really doing many vlog style videos. I think I've mentioned this before, but I would never really feel my body because I was just scared of the hate that I would get online because I was exposed to a couple hundred thousand followers at that point. I think I had about Oh, yeah, I would have had like 400,000 YouTube subscribers back then. You know, I got the odd comment every now and again, you know, body shaming and all of that. And so that was very hard for me to like overcome and like ignore. Even sometimes now I'll get a comment and I'm just like, ouch. It doesn't have to be in regards to like my weight or even if it's just like my appearance or something that I do or something that I've done, like they'll comment on that and it's just like, oh, okay, so they think that. And then it just makes you think like if they're commenting that, imagine how many other people are actually thinking that. So then it kind of like fucks with your head a bit. So yeah, I would just have to say, yeah, start off by filming yourself without actually speaking because I feel like that's the hardest part of vlogging is actually like <laughs> coming to terms that it's normal. Well, for me, it's normal now to like look into a lens and talk as if like you're a person. But it honestly just comes naturally. I, I promise you, I've never been like this. If you want to look back at even my old, old, old vlogs, I feel like I'm so much more different. Even my makeup videos, you can tell I'm so shy. My voice is really soft. It's just because I really didn't like want to be doing it, but... I had a passion for it. When you get really positive comments and people giving you feedback, it does boost up your confidence to want to make more videos and film more content. So without like you guys' feedback and comments and like support, I probably wouldn't be doing what I'm doing right now. Like I love reading you guys' comments. I try and reply to almost every single one of you here on YouTube. 
So thank you so much if you leave a comment, even if it's just like emojis or like love hearts, just so I know like you're watching my videos and you're obviously liking them enough to leave a comment. So I really appreciate when you guys leave a comment. Um, but yeah, like back to how to be not shy in front of a camera. As I said, it just comes with experience and practice. I might answer one more. How to know if someone is faking enjoying products that have been sent to them. Uh, you know what? You don't know these days. Like, I guess if people, like for influencers or even celebrities, if you've never seen them talk about something and they come on and they're like, oh, this is revolution. It's changed my life. My skin's never looked the same. Or this waist trainer is the reason why my waist is so skinny. And they've literally just come on for the promo. <laughs> they haven't used the product. I feel like the most genuine ads are from people that obviously like use the product but you see them using it either in their vlogs or they mention it without being like oh here's my discount code here's where it's from um you can just kind of tell that you know they obviously use it or if they're filming like i don't know if they're filming in their bathroom and they've got a different product there that they're promoting or something like that then you can kind of be like oh are you really using that like I can see you're using that that brand of cleanser but you just promoted this brand and a swipe up and you probably got paid a couple thousand dollars for it I have noticed that before that's why I said that so awkward um also I saw this is like spilling the tea I also saw this um influencer she was promoting a watch brand like a really popular watch brand right and saying like, oh yeah, this is really, really good. Like, love this watch. And then she's wearing a completely, like in her like daily life, like she's not promoting the other watch, but she's wearing a different watch. So that's kind of how you can tell if someone's being genuine or not. So that's like me raving about an Apple watch and being like, the Apple watches are the fucking best, which they are, you need it in your life. And then like after the promo is done, I put on a different watch. And then I, you know, continue filming videos and vlogs and, you know, sh clearly showing the other watch, you know, in stories, you can see the other watch. So it's like, why are you promoting another watch brand for the money when you literally don't even wear it? That's my little tea for today. I think I'm going to end that because that was a bit full on, but I definitely will get around to answering some more questions in my next vlog. But yeah, let me know if that is interesting for you guys. I guess that yeah, like I said, like it'd be so interesting for me to know everything if I wasn't in my position. Anyways, let me know if you enjoy these influencer chats. I would happily spill the tea on more juicy stuff next week. So stay tuned. Um, if you do have any other questions, I'll leave a pinned comment again. I'm going to finish my coffee. I just finished organizing my giveaway. I roughly calculated how much like retail price it's worth and I think it's like over four grand worth of makeup which is crazy and it is all products that I have been sent so I didn't actually go out and buy it um but I just thought because I don't think I'll ever get around to even using a third of it may as well give it away so yeah I'll leave all of the information on my Instagram but it won't be posted until probably this week so it probably wouldn't have been posted yet today we're gonna go to the post office see if i've got any parcels and then i need to go and get a few things from woolworths or aldi i don't know sometimes we shop at aldi sometimes it's at woolworths sometimes it's both um but yeah we need to go and get a few things so yeah i'm gonna go and wake peter up because it's still pretty early oh it's nine o'clock he usually gets up at like 8 39 i usually get up like an hour before him and do this kind of shit so I will chat with you guys later. All right, we just did our weekly shop. Is anyone else's boyfriend like this? Like, look at all this shit. Honestly, and this is my little section. I wanted to try this because I haven't tried it. I've tried the dairy-free one, but the carbs on this aren't too bad, and it's really low-cal. It's 6.6 .6 for one serving, which is about like one heat scoop, which is what I have anyways. Sugar's quite low to 3.2. It is pricey, it's $10, but I just thought I would try it out because we didn't go to Coles, we went to Woolworths and they don't have Donata at Woolworths yet. 
I got some no shoes. Peter loved the pork belly that we made last time. So we've got another one. I don't personally don't like the skin, but I don't mind the meat. Um, we just got some mints. I'm just going to make burgers maybe tomorrow. So I just grabbed this one because it was on sale. Some chicken breast, roast chicken, some strawberries for my pancakes. And then we ran out of the good sauce. So we just got this one instead. Reduced salt and sugar. Macros aren't too bad on this one. 2.7 per serving and 0.3, sorry, 2.7. Yeah, and then 2.4 sugars. So not bad. And then we just got some more maple syrup. I went to um, Big W as well and got some more coat hangers, some paper towels, and then just fabric softener and detergent. Okay, so I haven't made my cauliflower mac and cheese recipe for a while. So I thought I'd make some for tonight as a side for dinner. I'm gonna add one head of broccoli as well, just because it'll go off and I'm not really planning on eating it anytime soon. So I'm just gonna cut up all of these, wash them, and then I'll put them in here with some water and I'll first put them in the microwave for about, I don't really, I can't really remember. I think it was like 45 minutes, just so it can um, just become a little bit tender. So the cooking process is a lot shorter. You can put these like in a um, pot and boil them, but microwaving is so much quicker. So I'm just gonna do that. The one thing I hate about making this is it's so messy. Like there's just shit everywhere. Okay, so I've just put it in the microwave. I've topped it with some water. I just used two halves and a whole broccoli head. Now I'm going to dice up a onion and I'm gonna use my little eBay dicer, which I freaking love. It is amazing and such a time saver. Okay, this is how you do it. Chop it in half. Fuck, I need heat up. Okay, sometimes when it's really hard, I've gone in too far. You can just halve this. Wow, I'm literally the messiest cook. Look at that, look at that. All right, so now that that is all chopped up, also, don't put this in the dishwasher. Just hand wash it each time. I put that in the dishwasher, but just not the blades or this. I don't know, someone just told me not to, so I haven't. Um, and then I'm just going to mince up some garlic in my garlic crusher, which is this one. And this one's really good. I got it from Spotlight, actually. So random, but it's a really good one if you guys are looking for a good garlic mincer crusher thing. So I'll do that as well. Okay, just starting off by cooking the onion until it's transparent. Wait for that to cook. And then I'm gonna add in my cooking cream. I'm just gonna use a small one because calories. And then I'm just gonna mince four cloves of garlic into it. And then actually I'm gonna add bacon as well. I've just chopped up some bacon. I'm gonna add this in as well and cook it until it's nice and crispy. If you did wanna make the bake a bit creamier, you can definitely add like a bigger one, but I find the small one is enough. So just wait for that to cook. Okay, I just rinsed the broccoli and cauliflower. Now I'm just gonna add it back into the dish. You don't have to do this step, but I just find that when I do, just a little bit softer. So add it all in. Then what I'm gonna do is mince the garlic. This is so satisfying, watch. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so now that the garlic all mixed in, you're gonna wanna Put the heat on low and crack open your cream and literally pour it in. And just wait for it to kind of thicken up. 
like that. I'm just gonna add some pepper. Feel free to taste test it as well. I might taste it. Okay, it needs more salt, I think. I'm gonna add some salt as well. The bacon will make it nice and salty, but I love salt. Now I'm just going to simply pour this over. Make sure when you're doing it just to do it evenly. Like I said, if you want it more creamier, feel free to add some more cream, but I find that this is enough. And then what I like to do is kind of just like mix, mix it all in. I think I used 100 grams of bacon, by the way. It should look something like this. Now I'm going to place it in the oven for about 20 minutes on 180. Just keep watching it though. Like you'll see when it starts to sort of go golden brown. I might even do 25. And what I like to do is put a layer, like a thin layer of cheese on the top and then put it in until the top is nice and golden. And that's it. And then I just let it sit out on the counter for like an hour or so. Um, and then I pop it in the fridge. I find that the bake is best when it's reheated. I know it sounds really weird, but like it's just too like... I feel like when it's in the fridge, the cream sort of like thickened up and then when you reheat it, it just tastes amazing. It still tastes amazing fresh, but I personally like mine reheated from the fridge because I'm weird. Yeah, I'll come back in 25 minutes to show you guys um, what it looks like. Okay, this is what it should look like after about 20 minutes. So now I'm going to pop on a layer of cheese and pop it back in for another 10. Okay, here's our cauliflower bake. Yum. You guys need to make this. I'm just having steak as well. That's Peter's one. Love. Good morning, guys. Happy... Whoa, I thought it was Wednesday today. It's Thursday. Shit. Anyways, so I... I don't think I even told you guys this, but I was creating a filter for Instagram. It was really quick, like the whole process of it. Like we only really started last week and doing changes up until yesterday. And I really liked how it looked. And then I submitted it via some, ooh. Um, it's really windy outside now. Mirror ended up on the floor. So hopefully it doesn't smash. And we finalized it yesterday. I submitted it through the website that you need to submit all your filters because they need to be approved by Instagram and it randomly got approved last night. So yeah, it's on my makeup page. If you guys want to check it out, I'll show you guys where you can find it. You do have to update your phone though, otherwise it won't work. So if you go onto my page, my makeup page, it'll just be there. That's the filter, literally the look that I did yesterday. That's how quick it was approved and then you just press this to save or if you just want to try it for yourself but it's so cool i love the effect that it makes like just makes everything look really nice and bright I'm not sure if that's focused but i'm sure you've already seen it on my instagram page like look at the before and then look at the after on my phone that's quite cool this is not really showing it but um, little smooth beauty filter and then little faux freckles but it's not too smooth that it's full on so I really really like it and then there's little sparkles when a person is in the frame so yeah check out my new filter and make sure you tag me if you use it we're gonna make pancakes now and yeah I think I might do a Pilates workout today I didn't end up working out yesterday because I just was not in the mood. It was really cold in the morning. So I was like, oh, I'll just do it in the afternoon. And then I just didn't do it in the afternoon. So I'm going to do a workout, yeah, possibly after breakfast or even this afternoon, whenever it gets a little bit hotter. Okay, guys, I've decided I'm going to flip this into my jazz handmade office. So I'm going to get rid of all of this. Well, not get rid of it, but I'm just going to put it in a home. I think I've got like a little box that I can just... Oh, yeah, yeah. Perfect. I'm going to put all of my nail stuff all together in a box and just put that away. So that's the rug that I got from Bunnings. just like a little one. 
But I think I'm going to put my big Kmart one, which is in the spare room. I'm not sure how I feel about it with the bedding, but I did order some new bedding from Adairs. Like, it doesn't really go with the current bedding, but I did order like a, I think it's like a really light gray, like a textured set. So I'll show you guys what that looks like. I might just keep this in until I get the bedding just to see, because obviously those two clash. That's just all my Depop stuff and just random shit. Um, but yeah, for those asking, that's what the rug looks like. I quite like it. It does have a bit of a smell though, like when I first put it in, but it's fine now. Um, yeah, so if that doesn't look good with the bedding, I might put that rug in here, you know, just so I have something really nice. Um, also, I'm gonna, yeah, move all of this. Just kind of organize it, put some like jewelry stands here, put some stuff on display. I'm just gonna put away all of my softbox lighting because I don't really use them. The only thing I really use is my ring light, but I bought these from eBay. They're like, they're LED lights. To be honest, I literally used them once, just for some extra lighting. But they'll obviously come in handy when I'm taking Okay, well, they're out of battery, so that's good. Um, they'll obviously come in handy when I'm taking photos for my products, so I can just take that off and then just hold that if I need some extra lighting. But yeah, this room is just a mess, so I'm going to do a complete makeover. I've also inquired to get a neon sign of my logo, which I'll probably put up there, so I'm super excited, or even like behind here. I'm not sure, but that's my makeup by Jasmine, which I freaking love, and the lips. I got them from Custom Neon, but they were called um, Neon Collections, but I think they rebranded. So I'll leave the link down below. But yeah, I'm super excited to see the mock-up of that that they're going to make for me. And yeah, stay tuned for the reveal. Look at my little space. The lighting isn't the best. Hold on. Let's try and find. That's a bit better. <laughs> I've just got my flashlight on. How cool. I'll show you guys what the room looks like, but it's so plain right now. And I've got just some stuff on display at the back, which I'll show you guys later when I've like properly done it. I've just got my ring light there, my computer there. I'm just working on my website, but oh my God, how cool is that little display? I love it. Um, that's just a jewelry box that I brought back from um, Queensland that I had in my room. But yeah, I also just got, well, this is what I mainly came on for, a package from Beginning Boutique. So I sent back those two sizes to get um, a bigger size. So I ordered a medium in those two tops that were too small. And then um, I also got, that's a long sleeve top. I really wanted this butterfly hoodie. Oh my God. Look. <gasps> so cute. I got this one in a large because I wanted it to be oversized. But how freaking cute. Is there one more thing? I think there was a, yes, a butterfly top. I'm literally obsessed with butterflies right now. As you probably already know, but yeah, I got this long sleeve knit as well. And I think it ties up like here around the side. But yeah, I just thought I would show you guys my little, I would have to say office. Because I'm like turning it into an office, even though the lighting isn't the best. Oh, there's another parcel. <laughs> oh, that came so quick. I got some extensions from Balami Hair. I've seen quite a few people use it. <gasps> Oh my god! Okay, I'll open it and show you guys. I haven't worn this crop in ages. It's the Sasuke one. I remember I used to always wear it in my vlogs um, in Queensland. <laughs> so these are just normal clip-in extensions. Oh my god, the feeling of fresh extensions though. 
Yes. I love that they're brown at the top. Even though you probably won't be able to see them as much. My God, they're gorgeous. Okay, so there's one, two, man, these feel amazing. Three, okay, four pieces of hair. Plus, I think these are two side bits. Oh no, just one side bit. Oh my gosh, how amazing are they? I actually really like that they are brown at the roots because I haven't gotten my hair done in so long. So I feel like these would suit me perfectly. And even when I do have my hair done like fresh, that's awesome. I cannot wait to try. I'm going to have to wash my hair tonight and see what they look like all in. But I'll definitely keep you guys updated. Rooted Walnut Brown Ash Blonde. So it looks like that. Yay. Thank you so much. So freaking cool. I'll see if I can get a discount code as well. And there you have it a nice little clean room I've put all the washing away I'm gonna chuck these on which is the stack seamless this is the umber shade and for those asking I have gotten a few DMS asking um, if they are still on pre-sale yes they are they were sold out but they did continue to open um, so they can order some more but they won't be with you for another like four or four to six weeks I think they said so yeah I'm gonna put these on and set up to do a workout also I thought I would show you guys how I do my hair up in the clip so I just go like that get the hair and twist it Twist it around once, all the way up there, and then that's literally it. And sometimes I put two strands of hair down, but just to keep it out of the way, I just do it like that. I'm wearing my thanks. Love this so much. Like they did such a good job. I love that they're adjustable as well. So I usually wear mine on the tightest. Just to give me extra support. Honestly, goals. Oh my God, it's been so long since I've just laid down in the sun and it feels so nice. I'm just about to do a um, Pilates workout. Okay, I need to get up because I can't say anything. I'm gonna do, cool. I'm gonna do a Pilates workout with the magic ring. I'm just looking up a random YouTube video because I don't think Breathe Pilates have any newer ones. So I'm just gonna go onto YouTube. I'll leave it linked down below if it's good um, and do a little booty workout. Good morning guys. Wow, I look so pale. <laughs> I need to tan ASAP. I just finished a body pump workout. Not gonna lie, that was probably my least favorite workout I have ever done. Like it just didn't really get me breaking a sweat. I don't know, it was just weird. I couldn't really get into it. Like I didn't really enjoy the exercises. So I think I'm gonna have to repeat. I think it was 95 that I really enjoyed and I sweated like a mofo. <laughs> Um, also, I am wearing one of the new Amen crops. I said on my story that it is quite big for me because I did order a medium, but it's actually really cute. Like, I love the one shouldered look. Never really seen it in active wear before, but yeah, so this bit is just a little bit gapy. 
boob didn't like pop out during the workout or anything like that. I did have to lift it up a few times, like when I was doing um, clean and presses, but yeah, I think I should have gotten the small, but that's right. It still looks really cute. And then these are my Cara Lee collective bike pants. I'm obsessed with them. These are the scrunch bomb ones, but you can't really see because of the pattern. Obsessed. I think I need to say small in these now because they're getting a little bit too too comfy. Yeah, I haven't even had a coffee or breakfast yet. I'm gonna make a coffee while I'm on the phone call. But yeah, I think today I'm gonna exfoliate and do a fresh tan because I don't know, I just feel so pale like my face. It's probably because I haven't put the drops on that I usually put on in my moisturizer for the past like two nights. So my face is looking pale, but still looks really glowy. So yeah, I'm gonna go make a coffee, jump on a call, and I will catch up with you guys later. Yay, I just got a delivery. So I ordered from Bonds, because they were having a sale. Oh, were these on sale? I don't know, they were cheap anyways, but I have this in hot pink and I love it. It's so freaking comfy. So I just got it in gray and then this like bony color. I'm not gonna lie, I thought it was more of like a pale pink in real life, but I'm in a size 10. So I wear these to bed and just like around the house, they're so comfy. And then I got my toner from La Sorella. They mixed up like a lavender toner for me. So I'm super excited to try this out on my hair. I do have other things coming from her, like uh, shampoo, conditioner, and like Moroccan oil, I think, drops or something like that. But yeah, she'll send that in a separate package. But this is a like a kind of like a violet toner. So I'm keen to try that. And then... TikTok made me buy this online. I got it from Amazon. I'll leave it linked down below. I think, well, it's meant to be the Revlon one, but it doesn't say anything about Revlon. So not sure. It also came like quite damaged. But anyways, this is the hair dryer. Okay, this is definitely not the Revlon one. Otherwise it would say Revlon. Not sure. Anyways, I'll give it a go, but it's meant to give you like a blow wave type look. So I'm going to wash my hair today and let you guys know how it goes. Might have to go and watch the TikToks and see how they did it or a YouTube video. But yeah, so it's made for straightening and drying. Cute. Just went for a walk to the local shops and got a chicken salad. Got Peter Ooh. a continental roll. <laughs> Holy shit. They're actually so good. Um, and then I also checked my letterbox. <laughs> Look, I labeled it Peter's Snacks, like your little tub. I just need some more labels. So for underneath my sink here and then just some more swing tags, which you do peel off and they're white. They're for my um, washing basket. So like my whites, towels, and then darks. So I do have them. I'm gonna have a little section for my nails, hair cleaning. But yeah, I'll show you guys where those go anyways. Okay, guys. So I've just had a shower. I really need to clean up this makeup space. I'm going to try out my Amazon brush. So originally when I typed in the search bar of Amazon, I did type in the Revlon hairdryer brush. And this came up first. I actually couldn't find the Revlon one. Um, I don't know if it's sold out or they just, I don't know. I couldn't find the Revlon one. So I did look up this one, which is the first one that popped up. And it had like quite good reviews considering it's like a fake version. So I thought I would give it a go. Let me just do a little test. Okay, off, low. Okay, I did receive a message from a girl saying that it actually gets really hot. So just be careful. So if it does, I might go and get my glove that I sometimes use when I'm curling. Okay, let me just like do a little test run. Okay, so like that. All right, I'll put it on. It's on medium. Might be best for me to block that half blow dry my hair maybe. Actually, what I might do is put some heat protectant in it. Just using some from Beauty Works.
I'm actually very impressed. I'm still in the medium setting. I've just done like the bottom half. It's quite nice. I think I need to really get the hang of like how to actually curl the hair with it. Maybe I need to watch a video or something. Just done the second layer, like it really does smooth out your hair. Like you know when sometimes, or well, every time I blow dry, I don't really like use a brush and then like blow dry it like that. I just blow dry it and then it's all frizzy and then I'll style it. Um, it does get a bit hot, but like obviously you don't touch this part. So I'm just gonna do the last bit, and I'm using the high setting now. Guys, what the hell? That actually fully worked. <laughs> I'm like shook. Like I've never been able to get my hair to look like this. Like I'm so bad at doing hair. Like honestly so bad at doing like a blow dry finish. Like I think with practicing, like I'm gonna practice on how to do a little curl here. That is amazing. How cool is that? So at the front section, I'll show you guys what I did. I'll show you guys what I did here. So I basically went like that. Went from above and then just held it there for a bit. Just to get that volume here. And then I just kept turning the brush. And then it just kind of like gives you that lift. Like here. Sorry, but I'm actually shook. Like, look at my hair. It looks like a fucking wig. Um, I'm buying this for mum for Mother's Day as part of her present because she would love this. If I can use it, honestly, anyone could. Like I said, I'm going to literally play around with um, maybe how to put a few more curls in there. But you just kind of just rotate it like in different directions. So I did some rotating like to flick that way, some rotating to flick inwards, just to create like a really effortless look. But wow, I will leave the link down below where I got it from. As I said, it was just from Amazon Australia, but I've never seen my hair look like this before, like with me just styling it. So that is a win, big win. What a find. Um, I'm going to try and put in my extensions that I got from Bellamy. So it is very easy to put in. Like I'm very surprised. And they clip in really easy considering I haven't even teased up here. So I'm guessing these ones go on the side. But obviously if you want them to be way more firmer on your hair, tease where you're about to put them in, because see how I've just like really loosely put them in. So if I'm rough with my hair, it'd probably just fall out, but I just wanted to see what they look like and if they blended nice. So this is the other side. I've always wanted to try Bellamy hair extensions because I've always seen people rave about it on Instagram and YouTube. And they're actually quite affordable for hair extensions and stuff. They have ponytail extensions as well. And I think they've got a promo going on. If you spend a certain amount, you get a free ponytail extension. All right, let's... Let me see what it looks like if I go over.
I just got a parcel that Peter just dropped for me in my room. Look at my hair. Holy shit. That definitely made a little bit of a difference in just like blending my hair in. Oh my god, how gorgeous. So Hourglass has just come out with a veal setting spray. I am I was obsessed with this primer so much. So excited to use that again. And then a brush with two different sizes for setting underneath the eyes and the rest of the face. So thank you so much. So yeah, this is like my first proper clip-in extensions that I've gotten that actually don't look too fake or unnatural with my hair. It blends really well. Um, I feel like when you're wearing hair extensions, they'll look more natural if your hair's curled. So I probably will curl these with my curling iron. Um, or even I could use my Bondi Boost one and have those like ripple curls. Anyways, I'm gonna go and finish cleaning up the space because it looks like a bomb's hit it again. <laughs> I would honestly pay someone to come clean my makeup room. The rest of the house, I'm literally a clean freak. The kitchen, the bedroom, the laundry, outside, like I'm like everything has to be in its home. So then when it comes to my beauty room, I'm like, I cannot be bothered. <laughs> oh, okay, well, maybe I should sort my life out and clean this room and find something to eat again because I'm hungry. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. I just woke up to a parcel from Before You Speak. How do they know that I literally had like none left? They are crazy. Thank you so much. They've rebranded their packaging as well, or like redesigned it. So this is the OG one. Because it is coming into winter and it's cold, I haven't been having iced coffees as much. Sometimes I will like during the day, but in the mornings now I've been having hot coffees. Yesterday I actually had the mocha, which is also freaking amazing, with the creamer. And it literally tastes like a hot chocolate, like a cough, like a mocha. So, so creamy. So I used this yesterday with the mocha. I like chocolate and coconut. They're my favorites. Oh, and caramel is really nice. But yeah, I've been having hot coffee, so I'm definitely going to have to have these now that I've got a fresh batch. I do have a code for Before You Speak as well. Um, I'll leave it on the screen. I'm pretty sure it's just Jazz10 and it gets you 10% off. I thought I would show you guys the bralette that I got from Bond. So I do have the neon pink one, which I actually got in New Zealand when I was with Riley, just randomly stumbled across them. And they're so comfortable. I get a size 10. This is not sponsored or anything. Like I literally bought this, but um, yeah, they're just the seamless bralettes. Is that even good lighting? Seamless bralettes, but they do latch at the back like a normal bra. So that's the back. Um, so yeah, I got this color and then a bone color and they're only, I think $25 and they do free shipping as well. So I just thought I'd show you guys what it looks like on. Hey guys, from my little office. So weird being in here. Like I usually just chill on my stools in my kitchen. Like that's like my little office. Or when Peter's not in the actual study, I'll go in there. But it's quite cute. I really want to um, get some cool stuff for in here to display some of my jewelry. So I think I'm going to use my ikea stand that i originally bought for my makeup room and put it together because it's still not together like we still haven't put it together and we bought it literally like five months ago it's still like in pieces in my beauty room anyways i want to build that and put it in here and buy like really nice jewelry stands and stuff so i can display my jewelry instead of just having it all on my desk but for now, it's all right. But I think I'll need this space very soon. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed my vlog. I just thought I'd come on here and wrap it up. Thank you guys so much for watching. And I will see you very soon. Bye.